Hello, everyone. I, I tend to talk a little bit at the beginning here so you don't empty, enter a quiet room. Um, so we're going to take a few moments here till we start our conversation and get comfortable. Um, last chance to use the bathrooms. And um, we'll get started here in a couple of minutes with our conversation. We hope you enjoyed the film and thank you for joining us here. Um, by the way, I'm Isaac Zablocki. I don't know if I even introduced myself last night, but I'm Isaac Zablocki. I'm, I'm the director and co-founder of Real Abilities. Thank you all for being here. I do my little, this is an opportunity for my Zoom 101 where I also would share that at the top of your screen, you have the option for speaker view and gallery view. Um, it's nice at the very beginning to see the gallery view and uh, go through the pages to see the different, uh, the different people there. And then uh, I, I recommend once the conversation starts to have, um, to have um, uh, the, the, the speaker view, to go back to the speaker view. Um, we're gonna get started in just a So folks, our conversation before, before we start, I'm also gonna, um, I see they placed on the side of the screen um, already an alert to let you know that live captions are available. Um, I wanna thank Lauren Schechter, who's uh, actually providing live captions. This isn't uh, some robot doing this. And you have to just press to access them, press the closed caption um, button that's on the bottom right of your screen. Um, this uh, conversation is being recorded and we're going to have it um, available immediately. And, um, and what else do I need to tell you? I think the way, the way this is going to go, just to give you a little bit of background, a little bit of, um, we, we are learning every night and trying to adjust this every night as we create community here in a, in a new way. And um, um, we're going to start with a conversation that's moderated and then we're going to open it for your questions. Please use the chat on the, that's gonna pop up on the side of your screen, the chat option only for questions. Um, here and there you can put in some important comments, but really just so it's, so we can follow the questions there. Um, we will select questions from there and pass them on to our moderator. If for some reason you cannot ask your question through um, the chat option, then um, please, uh, please raise your hand. There's a raise hand option, actually a button that makes, allows you to raise your hand. I haven't tried it yet, but uh, I heard it's possible. Um, so you could use that option. You could wave a lot and maybe eventually you'll get my attention um, and we'll check in with you and we'll be able to unmute your mic to ask a question if necessary. All your mics, I'm sorry, are muted automatically in the system. We have the power to unmute it and uh, we abuse that power. Um, what else can I tell you before we get started into the q and I, uh, I think we're ready to jump in. So um, I just wanna give a few big thank yous. First of all, I always thank our partners who are doing the work on the ground um, year round um, that relate to these films. And I really recommend you check out on the Real Abilities website, check out our partners page um, and see all the wonderful and connect with all the wonderful groups that are doing amazing work and allowing Real Abilities to happen. We are a partner organization, Anita Altman, who's with us tonight, I think gets credit for conceiving this idea of really making Real Abilities a program that both supports partners and exists thanks to the partners. Um, I'm gonna thank Team Fox, um, uh, Parkinson's Disease Care, uh, Disease Care New York, Dance for PD, um, Fitness for PD at LIU, um, and a very special shout out, um, uh, Real Abilities is run out of the Marlene Meyerson JCC Manhattan. And um, we have a wonderful Parkinson's program at the JCC that I recommend checking out. I wanna give a big thank you um, to Caroline and Joelle for spreading the word to our community as well. And hope um, some of you are getting to us through, through our home base. Um, and now it gives me great pleasure to hand things over to our moderator who is Anita Hollander. Anita Hollander is one of our founding supporters. She is on our selection committee. She is an actress. Um, she was supposed to have a one woman show here at, uh, at um, the festival. And I'll tell you a little more about that at the end of the conversation. Um, unfortunately, due to the circumstances, it's not happening, but it will be happening elsewhere. Um, the show will go on. So we'll share information about Anita's show. Um, 
we're really excited to have here tonight um, the director and the writer slash actress um, from the film, um, the director, Tom Martin. Thank you so much for being here. And Thank you, the writer slash actress is um, Sue Wiley. We all recognize. Um, we really, I, I want to just give one note, which Anita is going to say a lot before I hand it over. It's that um, that's one of the things that really struck us besides it's being a completely engaging film that we feel can work for anyone. Um, and that's what we like to see at Real Abilities. The authenticity um, really was something that shined through in this film and took it to, a, to another level. So I'm handing things over to you, Anita. And um, I'll just mention that none of you will miss the comedy night, which comes right afterwards at eight o'clock. We're gonna um, make sure that the conversation stays on the schedule. So over to you, Anita, thank you. Watch our time, because we all need to laugh, for sure. Hi, everybody, I'm Anita Hollander, and I'm so pleased, very, very pleased to be able to be moderating this conversation tonight. Um, I'm so glad people viewed, uh, tuned in to view the movie because I'm going to say it right out that after watching hundreds of films every year, but particularly this year, this was my number one choice, the top of my list uh, as just, I just love this film so much and it's going to like spill out of me a lot during this conversation. But um, one of the very important things that I felt as a person who writes and performs her own material and, and uses it is the idea of um, using your disability experience to create art and then surprisingly the art creates work and that's what I find over the decades I've been doing it is that You've created, you've created this beautiful piece of art and the art somehow pays you back by giving you more work because you perform. Um, and the combination in this film was that I was watching the film thinking, okay, is she acting this or is she, you know, and all this stuff, because as I watch every movie, I'm looking for authenticity and I'm going, well, either she is the most incredible actress I've ever seen, which she, is one of the best actresses I've ever seen, but her authenticity was so there. And it, what she proved the point that we so often fight for, and me as the National Chair of Performers with Disabilities for SAG-AFTRA, is that authenticity, you can't, you can't replace that. It enriches a role, it brings so much to a role, you cannot fake that. So what Susan, Sue brought was these two levels of incredible acting and the authenticity of someone who really knows what it's like, knows the experience, understands it inside and out. And she brought both to it so beautifully that it just, um, I can watch that film over and over again. And I'm glad that you all have watched it. So my first question will go directly to Sue, who I'm so thrilled to meet and I'm fangirling all over the place. Um, I wanted to ask you if there was a moment because you've mentioned to me that this whole thing started with writing. Well, first you found out you had a diagnosis, then you wrote a play and the play was performed and then the play became a film. And that's what I want to explore in this conversation is, did you have a moment, a defining moment that made you think, oh, this is a play, I, this should be a play. Or was it, was there a moment when you, we're going through whatever you were going through, but you figured it out. And if you did have a moment like that, I would love to hear about it. I think we'd all love to. Hi, well, thank you. Thank you for your kind words. Um, I think I had various defining moments, if, you, if I'm allowed more than one. And the first one came after its very first scratch performance as a play. Um, and the reaction we got from that so overwhelmed me from the beginning and every time I went on then to perform it um it's amazed me how people have found it cathartic um defining moment I, I, I think it's people's responses to it as I say it's been hard to think of one particular moment so you wrote something down you wrote a draft of something and you read it to people or you yes actually yeah that, that yeah so you brought me back thank you so when i wrote it 
I thought at some point, I think this might work. I just had this sort of tingle factor about it because I wrote from my heart. I wrote it originally to be cathartic for myself, but I also was really aware that my friends knew very little about Parkinson's and there was this sort of awkward, should we ask Sue any questions about it? Should we pretend you know, that awkwardness? And I thought, I need to get rid of that. We need to make this a positive thing. Give them more, um, there's too much misunderstood, misunderstood about the condition. So I wanted to write something that informed them, but wasn't kind of bopping them on the head with you know, worthy facts. I wanted it to be an entertaining piece of drama in its own right. And that's what's delighted me, is that it works on two levels. It works as a piece of drama, but it does also work for the Parkinson's community. And yeah, another tingle factor moment for me was when the consultants came to see it. And their reaction was, you need to make this into a film. We realise that we can be brought up short on how we deliver you know, a diagnosis that's not good. Um, that really kind of touched me as well. That they could see its use then as a, a, a medical resource. And that's why we made the film, to get it out to a much wider audience. Yeah. That's wonderful. And uh, I, I, it's so relevant and resonant for me too, the same very similar kinds of things. Um, with the consultants and breaking stigma about the thing by entertaining people <laughs> is just an amazing way to give your message. And, uh, and along those lines, I'm moving over to Tom. I feel like I'm on the Brady Bunch. All the, I'm moving <laughs> over to Tom now, Tom Martin, the director. So we had to make a transition from this play that was obviously touching people's lives and being a wonderful thing, but theater is different from film and there's different ways to use it. And uh, as we learn, as we go along. So can you talk a little bit about the transition or you, I mean, you both can, but we'd love to hear your voice uh, about the transition from stage, from the theater to a film of this, because there was so much landscape and a lot of big stuff that I couldn't have imagined seeing on the stage. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, yeah, I, yeah, they are, they're very different mediums. Um, and my, my sort of initial introduction to the play was when um, Sue got in touch through a friend of mine, um, kind of with this idea to make uh, a film version. And there was kind of a couple of sort of options up, which, you know, do we just shoot the play, you know, uh, kind of on stage and write it sort of really specially and, and kind of shoot the sort of theatre performance, um, which they had had a, a sort of single take kind of, you know, video recording of one of the performances. So that's how I was able to sort of see the play the first time. And, um, and it was amazing. Um, and, uh, and for me, uh, you know, I didn't, I didn't see a great deal of value in, in, in shooting the play um, again and sort of just doing it a bit nicer. I kind of felt well if we can adapt this um, to something that's, you know, achievable, uh, you know, it, it's, uh, it's, there's a way to, there's a way to sort of bring people in uh, um, so much closer uh, in, in, a, in a narrative sort of film, as opposed to filming the play from distance with long lenses. And so for me, I kind of felt, well, I mean, I'm only getting a taste from watching this, this video um, uh, of the play, uh, but, uh, but, you know, I can see that there's, there's so much power there and it's such an amazing story that, it, you know, shooting, you know, adapting it into a film uh, was, was kind of, you know, the only way to do it justice. Yeah. Well, oh, and did you have to change a lot of, that, of the actual script? I mean, all the all the dialogue and everything is pretty much as as Sue wrote it. Um, I think uh, I, I think I'm right to say that you know a lot of the kind of experiences and even the relationship uh, uh, with Lucas is you know it's it's all sort of kind of lifted from experiences that Sue had at the time, uh, and so I think that's why there's such a you know there's an honesty to it. Um, um, but in terms of uh, adapting, there was a few things um, that really from my sort of point of view as a, as a sort of producer, director, just trying to find ways to sort of simplify things a little bit. Um, the only major change I would say would be, there was quite a big, I, I, I requested if it was possible to change locations a little bit uh, for some of the scenes, just as a way to make them kind of flow, because you're always trying to make scenes flow and, and, and kind of keep pace and things like that. And sometimes it's tricky if you're, if you're moving around, you've got so much more suspension of disbelief with theater. Uh, and so you can move about a lot easier. Uh, and so for me, it was just kind of making it as efficient as possible. <laughs> That's terrific. And it's a visual medium, so you really used it. I, I thought that was fabulous. Okay, so we have to get to the question of parkour. 
Um, I was afraid we were going to watch you jump off a building, Sue, and I was terrified. I was totally terrified that we were now, oh my God, she's freaking going to jump off the building. <laughs> and I was a little nervous for you, but um, it's just so interesting to bring parkour and Parkinson's. Just because the word park is there doesn't mean they have anything to do, but then you brought it together so beautifully of the reason that those two were together. It's, that's just one of the great joys of the movie. But what about this parkour? And was this actor part of the play or did you cast someone who could do parkour? Because we were watching him jump off of things. I mean, unless you were faking some of that stuff, I don't know how you could. Um, did you, Sue, did you know the actor that was going to play the part? Or had, was it a one-woman show, but you added an actor? No, it was, it was always the two of us, very much two, the two of us. Um, and it's based on complete truth. Lucas, whose real name is Laszlo, uh, was into free running. But he was doing it on the school. He hated school, very bright, sort of, sort of ADHD profile. School couldn't contain him. But his outlet was to go running. And... He kind of wanted to be found out about it because he came and told me that he'd been running on the roof, <laughs> offloaded it to me. And actually, to be honest, I should have been telling him off, but I found it fascinating because it was so extreme. What would drive, so it's got to be a certain personality type that is driven towards doing such a you know, high risk kind of sport, but it's beautiful to watch. So the, the original guy was into parkour when, and he was in some of the stage versions. But when we came to the film, he wasn't, he wasn't ready to, to be part of that, he needed, yeah, we felt it was right to, to cast that part. We saw about 10 young actors, all of whom had some sort of, you know, experience in some kind of physical theatre. And Roly, who came in to see us, straight away we knew he was the right person to play the part. So we cast him and he came in on the tour with us with the play and then continued the role when we um, made it into a film. And this, you know, both of them have stayed really good friends, which is nice, so yeah. Oh, he was really amazing, and it seemed perfect casting, indeed. And I wondered if, um, have you followed up with that um, connection with parkour, or is that just something that was then, or is there anything that you've taken with you following up on it? Um, I think we'd like to introduce more of it within the play, and indeed if there's another film ever to be made. It would be nice to... Um, have you know, some young people doing some really great daredevil parkour at the beginning. And in fact, this theatre project that I mentioned earlier, we do plan to do that, to go back to the stage version, but we want to incorporate local communities to come and be part of that parkour sequence. And oh, that's wow. up to any age. But I, I haven't taken it up myself and I didn't make the jump. <laughs> well, <laughs> well, Metaphorically, I made the jump, but... <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Well, it's fascinating, and I know that I was wondering that after I saw the film. And um, I, I don't know, would it be okay to take some questions? Is that all right, Itzy, if, with you, if I Yeah, do? yeah, yeah. All right, then. I'm looking at a question from Laura Lieberman. How do you feel writing and acting the wonderful scene in the grocery store when you played the medical card? <laughs> so, how, did you, how do I feel... How did you feel writing, acting the wonderful scene in the grocery store when you played the, played the medical card? Well, that scene, was sort of, when we showed it in its early days, in its infancy, we showed the film, uh, the play to various Parkinson's groups. And that was the one thing they all came back and said, it's such a common experience. You have to put a scene in your play, your film, that shows that. So that's how we kind of started off doing it. I have to say that I have now totally become Rose because when I go to the, wait, um, to the supermarket, I do get the shakes, I can't get the card out, my money falls over the floor, and I think, oh my God, you know, I've become my own self fulfilling prophecy. <laughs> so how I felt was it, it gave me an insight to the vulnerability you know, of an everyday activity of going shopping and feeling confident. But that was a real big deal for a lot of people who would, would avoid going shopping if they possibly could. Yeah. So worried about you know, having Parkinson's symptoms kick in. So it felt, and it's so serious that you know, there's no humour within that, that scene. It's a very powerful scene, I think. It felt really right to have that as part of it, to show that, yeah, little things can become big mountains. Very true. Anita Altman, hello. You have a question. It's, do you have any therapies like PT or occupational therapy at this point in your life?
for living with Parkinson's? Um, I nothing that's given by the hospital medically, but I do yoga. I took I took up when I was diagnosed yoga. Um, I go to a keep fit class. I'm still just about managing to play tennis. I'm a bit wobbly, but I'm hanging on in there, and I try to do as much walking as I can. So I keep fit through that. But there's um, and I have a massage, which is really good. That's really helpful. It's about just keeping moving. If you stop too, too long, you stiffen up and, yeah, so it's keeping moving as much as I can. Um, a question from Beth Stuckey. Was your transition from ad adapt to accept a long while? And what sort of time frame was it for you to that point? Hmm. That's a good yeah, that's a good question. So I think you go through various processes of, of dealing with the shock at first hearing the diagnosis, um, that sense of loss and bereavement, and then coming through that. Um, so can just remember the question again. So oh, it was actually given to me that the adapt, accept, adjust. The lady came up to me very early on saying, this is a motto I found useful. Would it be useful to you? And as soon as I looked at it, I thought, yeah, that completely sums up in those three short words what I, what, what I strive for and I hope other people strive for. And of course, we have bad days. But when did I accept fully? I said it took at least a year. And I think in a way, you still carry on. You never fully accept. You still always hope there'll be some way out. Um, I have to remind myself of that, to adapt and adjust. And I get very frustrated by things. And I scream at, you know, whatever it is that's bothering me at the time. Um, but to me, you've got to keep on working hard at keeping positive. Because the more you can do that, the more you're helping yourself anyway. And I think the other thing about the motto, yes, it was pertinent to someone with Parkinson's, it's relevant to everyone. We all have to adapt, accept and adjust things in our lives. So I like it for its universality. Yeah. Great. Um, and a technical point, Garrett. Hi, Garrett. It's nice to see you. Um, Garrett is reading the captioning and he says that it's dropping off on the last of the endings. Um, it's going, it's disappearing too fast for him to be able to read it. So we want to make sure, he's my ASL teacher, you better make sure he can get it. Um, okay, we'll um, help you on that one. Hopefully we get some help. Um, Keith. Murphy DeConcini. Hello, Keith. So your question is, Sue, how did you come to the creative decision to the final length of the movie, barely an hour, or was that a decision made by or with your director, Tom? Mm, it would be good for Tom to come in on this too, but I think it was budget driven in many ways. I don't think we thought too much about the, the length of the, the film. It has been a bit tricky because it's too long to be a short and too short to be a long uh, in many ways. But Tom, do you want to pick up on that too? Yeah, I think, um, I think, yeah, it was a budgetary thing. I think we kind of, um, the way we sort of approached funding it was largely Kickstarter uh, backed. Um, uh, that sort of accounted for, I guess about sort of 60, 65% of the budget. Um, the rest, we kind of had some uh, preliminary donations um, and we had some donations from a couple of universities who uh, wanted to use it um, as, a, as a, an educative tool uh, for people training uh, uh, in nursing at universities and things. They felt that certain scenes, particularly things like the diagnosis uh, scene would be a very useful thing for a, a, a studying doctor to, you know, to see and, and, and kind of see from the, the, the patient's perspective I think they, they figured that would be handy but so yeah it was kind of a case of what could we realistically um, uh, raise to make the film coupled with what we sort of had available to, be, to sort of start us off and from that it was a case of okay so this is our budget um, and then yeah it was just kind of yeah it really was a, a, a pretty serious exercise in in being frugal, uh, finding ways to communicate all of those kind of, well, as many of those kind of, you know, emotional depths and moments uh, as we could, whilst being as lenient uh, as we could with uh, with sort of the number of shots and setups and things that we had to do. Uh, it's it's always a bit of a balance. Um, if you know, in an ideal world, it absolutely would have been 
at least an hour and a half um, and we, we, we would have gone into more uh, uh, yeah more depth in all of it um, you know there's obviously and there's obviously kind of parkour scenes that we wanted to shoot and you know go really out there with all of it um, but it was sort of it, you know it was sort of started as a fairly small film and so you know I think it's almost after making it we kind of thought god this is really good if only we made more <laughs> yeah, it's true so you really did consolidate so much in a small time, a small amount of time. It's amazing. Okay, Kunal Mahajan asks, what advice would you give the rest of us that have disabilities based upon what you have learned about your own acceptance journey? Sue. Well, could you repeat the question? Yeah. Um, I was worried that I had mispronounced his name or her. I'm sorry if I mispronounced the name. But anyways, what advice would you give the rest of us that have disabilities based upon what you have learned about your own acceptance journey? Oh, that's a tricky question. Because um, I think it's different for each person how you cope with a, a condition. Um, some people, when they're diagnosed with something, like to join a group or a club where there's lots of other people with the same condition. Some people like to keep both separate and just deal with it on their own. Um, so I think the advice is within the motto, as I said earlier, you know, hang on to it, accept, adapt, adjust. How can you apply that to your life? Um, and I just encourage anyone out there who don't let it think it's got you. I've got Parkinson's, but Parkinson's hasn't got me. Is a kind of phrase that I, I felt was helpful. You've got to be realistic about what you can do, but always be pushing yourself to try and do a little bit more and a little bit more. And one of the things I'm pleased about with this one, it's given a voice to Parkinson's. So if you're out there with another condition, um, you know, maybe there's a way of dramatizing that or, or using kinetics to show that it's universality again. Okay, it's about Parkinson's, it's about any condition that you're dealing with. I hope that sort of answers the question. It's quite a tricky one to, to give any single piece of advice. That is tricky. Um, Keith, I hope you were there to hear the answer to your question because I don't know if you walked away, but I, oh good, you're nodding your head. Okay. Um, I, let's see. Where was, Itzy, uh, Isaac asks, uh, where was the film screened? Where was it film screened? That's our last question. Do you want to take that song? Uh, sure. Um, so it was, uh, we filmed, um, we actually filmed, some of it was in the studio. Uh, so uh, the um, Rose's apartment and the, uh, the school, uh, her office, um, where they, they kind of hang out and stuff. Um, so those were sets built in a studio um, that meant that we could film them all back to back, not worry, we have to worry about what time of day it was or whatever. We just sort of, uh, crack on and, and, and get through it all in a couple of days and then the uh, all of the school scenes were actually shot in the school where uh, Sue used to teach and where this actually happened um, which is amazing and for a while we thought we weren't going to be able to get it uh, and uh, and obviously you know Sue has her connections um, and and yeah they they were wonderful and allowed us to shoot there uh, during the school summer holidays um, and it was amazing. And actually, when we went there, like one of my first thoughts was, I, I'm not surprised that uh, that Laszlo went running around on the roofs because seriously, it, it was like a playground. Um, I was very jealous. My school didn't look like that. <laughs> right. Well, Tom, um, I actually probably asked that wrong. I think uh, what was really meant to be asked was, where has it screened? Where have you? Oh. Okay. So so I, yeah. There you go. Shall I take that, Tom? Yeah, go for it. So we premiered in um, Dorchester, which is where I live, um, in our local cinema. They lent it to us for two nights, and we sold out for those two nights into the third night. We then went to, we've shown at the BFI, British Film Institution, BFI, um, and several other London-based cinemas. Oh, gosh, it's gone all over the country. Uh, Big Do in Nottingham. Um, the Cambridge yeah. International Film Festival it was yeah. at as well. Yeah, and our biggest, one of our biggest triumphs was, and it was to be shown at Parkinson's World Congress, which was on Kyoto last year in June. And that was a few thousand more delegates, we didn't all come, but there were a few thousand delegates there to hear about it. And we're hoping we might go again. 
really give it good promotion. That was very, very exciting. I sent my son Ben there. I couldn't go there myself, but Ben was our ambassador and there was a lot of good networking. And yeah, we're, we're proud of what we've achieved. It's been a good team effort. That's great. Um, was there time for one more or are we at the end? We're, we're really at the end, unfortunately, oh, because we have. So I'll, my, let you, I'll, I'll let you tie it up a little bit. Uh, well, no, uh, I thank you so much. I know there are more people who want to, uh, who have questions, and um, this will be an ongoing discussion, I'm sure, in some way. Uh, but thank you so much. I mean, I'm just so glad that I got to meet both of you. And maybe when I'm doing the show in London in September, maybe I'll get to meet you because in person. <laughs> <laughs> but I just, um, I really appreciate this and the chance for me to get to chat with you and for all of us to have a chance to get to know you, wonderful people. Thank you very so, much. So thank this you so is, much. This is a, a, an opportunity for me also to thank um, Anita Hollander, who her, sh her one woman show, Spectacular Falls, was just invited to the United Solo in London for September, and hopefully that will run. Um, and um, yeah, we're, we're hoping that it will run again here at Real Abilities, maybe next year, um, Anita, if that's okay. Um, and it will also be at the Fury Festival in, Sa in San Francisco in July, also hopefully um, <laughs> will be up and running. Um, so hopefully you'll be able to catch her. Um, Anita is also a very active member. I don't know if there's, I'm sure there's a more formal title for it um, in uh, SAG-AFTRA and the um, Performers with Disability program there. And that's, they're really a fabulous partners of ours since the very beginning and uh, great supporters and do amazing work. And this is something, this is a, a program we've become very involved with here at Real Abilities um, to see more authentic representations and more responsible representations on the screen and um, Anita really helps us form um, the films that ultimately you all get to see and um, know that that's really um, one of her big efforts. So um, thank you very much. Thank you, thank you all for participating. Um, thank you for this fabulous film. Um, folks, tomorrow um, at, um, what is our time? At 1.30, I believe, we have our screening of 25 Prospect Street. So please join us for that afternoon screening. That's, uh, you know, nobody's at work. It really can work this time. Um, <laughs> and um, then, of course, right now, in exactly seven minutes, you have time to run to the bathroom. Um, join us for comedy tonight. Um, we're having our, our comedy tonight, and it's going to be a live, engaging conversation with um, some fabulous comedians um, from the disability world. Um, thank you all um, and have a good night. Thank you. Thank you.